ASMR video. Today I'm going to be doing my third part of four of going through my Only Force Norse's DVD collection and reading out the episode synopsis. Today we're going to start with series six and end with series seven but there'll be some specials in between. So I had them the other way around so I can show you the picture on the side of Del Boise and Mike there. But of course they're the wrong way rounds for us to read them so I'm just going to have to carefully place them. So we start the first disc and we do them chronologically as that makes much more sense. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we've got eight DVDs to go through um, this time. So without further ado let's get started. So I'll move these to one side because I need to make sure that you can read this when I'm actually reading it out. So this is Series 6, Episodes 1 and 2. You notice there's only two um, episodes on each disc now because the episodes are longer than they were before. Instead of being half an hour, they're more like 50 minutes. So the synopsis is bigger too. So yuppie love. Del Boy has his heart set on becoming a high-flying yuppie type. Convinced it'll impress the ladies and help to expand his business clientele. Complete with flashy Mac, Filofax and a briefcase, he ditches the nag's head for the plush surroundings of a wine bar, much to the annoyance of the regulars. Meanwhile, Rodney has fallen for the classy Cassandra at his evening class. He's chuffed to bits when she offers him a lift home later. But what will Cass think of Nelson Mandela House? Danger UXD. Another day, another dodgy deal for Del Boy, and this time he can't believe his luck. In return for simply faking his signature on a delivery note, Del becomes the proud owner of fifty dollars for the bargain price of £100. What he didn't realise until he'd sealed the deal was that the do toys in question were adult sex dolls, more suited to a stag party than a nursery. In a desperate effort to get rid of the dolls, Dell contacts sex shop owner Dirty Barry. Can the trotters get a shot of the final fearers? Interesting how I didn't actually mention in there at all about what was wrong with the dolls. Series 6, Episodes 3 and 4. Chain Gang. Dan and Rodney visit the 111 Club Casino for an evening on the tiles, where retired jewellery dealer Arnie makes Dell an offer he can't refuse. He wants to offload his old stock. 250 18 karat gold chains at a bargain basement price. The deal is signed and everything's looking lovely jubbly until, on handing over the goods, Arnie is taken seriously ill and is carted off to hospital, along with Dale's money and the chains. The unlucky winner is the trotters are off to Majorca thanks to the Mega Flakes art competition that Dell entered on Rodney's behalf. Dell, Rodders and Cass depart for sun, sea and sangria. But there's a snag. Dell confesses to Rodney that he's won first prize in the under 15s category, so he's got to pretend he's 14 and a half all week. Poor Cass has to act as Rodney's stepmom and Dell's wife. Rodney forgive Dale for showing him up in front of his beloved Cassandra. Series 
Story 6, Episodes 5 and 6. Dale's got sorry, sickness and wealth. Dale's got stomach problems, but insists they are a result of his new yappy lifestyle and nothing more than a case of PMA, positive mental attitude. His aching belly may actually be a reaction to having been threatened with eviction because the trotters haven't paid their rent. In a desperate bid to raise cash, Dell hosts a seance evening at the Nags Head. He reckons that it's all a load of old cobblers, but when he gets a health warning from beyond the grave, Derek realises it's time to visit the dock. Little problems. Wedding bells are ringing, but all is not well for the trotters. Despite his recent engagement, Rodders is depressed. He reckons he's failed his diploma in computer science again, which could mess up his plans for a job with Cassandra's old man, and he needs £2,000 for a deposit on a flat. Tailboy comes to the rescue and promises the money as a wedding gift, but the infamous Driscoll brothers are also after his cash. Will Dale dodge the greedy gangsters and make it to the church on time? I have to say I did prefer the 50 minute episodes to the half an hour ones. The half an hour ones are very good, but I like to get comfy and watch a 50 minute one and it was always a nicer experience for me because it had a big, better story. It wasn't quite so crammed in and you got to know the characters better. This is the Christmas special from 1989, The Jolly Boys Outing. Probably one of the best episodes. Dale's organising the annual Lads Beano to Margate. For the Nags Head regulars, Cass isn't happy about Rodney going away with the boys so soon after their first wedding anniversary. And to make matters worse, her dad's going along for the ride. They swear they'll be on their best behaviour. But before long, the coach driver is drunk and Rodney is arrested for kicking a ball at a policeman. If that wasn't enough, the coach blows up when the onboard radio, supplied by Dell, catches fire. With no transport, the lads have no choice but to stay in Margate for the night. But at the height of summer, will there be any hotel rooms available? Christmas special 1990. Rodney come home. With Rodders, now a high-flying executive working for Cassandra's dad, Uncle Albert helps Del Boy out on the market. Although business could be better, Del's love life improves when Raquel agrees to move into Trotter Towers. Meanwhile, despite his move up the career ladder, Rodney's miserable. Things aren't going well between Cass and him. Dinner's never on the table when he gets home, as his wife's too busy attending work-related functions. Ever the optimist, Derek is determined to heal the rift between Rodders and his missus, but Dale's schemes have a habit of backfiring. Series 7, Episodes 1 and 2 The sky's the limit. Trotter Towers is a squeeze, what with Raquel moving in and Rodney sleeping on the sofa. But when Boise asks Dell to track down his missus, a missing satellite dish, he's soon on the case. He's also eager to patch up his little brother's marriage, booking him a room at a hotel near Gatwick so that Rodders and Cassandra can have a reunion when she flies back from holiday, but Cass gets rerouted to Manchester, and the reason for this is on the Trotter's balcony. The chance for lunchtime. While Dell's hard at work flogging his national anthem musical doorbells, Raquel's busy dreaming of stardom. She's got an audition for a part in a Shakespeare play, but Derek's worried about what might happen if she starts mixing with a load of theatrical types. 
brothers and cast meanwhile are having yet another try at reconciliation, which goes horribly wrong when Rodney is spotted in a clinch with the dreaded Trudy. Series 7, Episodes 3 and 4 Stage Fight Rodders is desperate to get out of Trotter Towers, but what the council offer him isn't exactly the luxury detached abode he'd been hoping for. Meanwhile, despite being pregnant, Raquel finds herself signed up to Del Boy's Trotters International Star Agency. She agrees to sing at Peckham Night Spot, the Starlight Rooms, as part of a double act with singing dustman Tony Angelino. Tony may be hit with the Blue Rinse Brigade, but will he hit the right notes for local villain Eugene McCarthy? The Class of 62. The Martin Luther King Comprehensive Old Boys, Dell, Rodney, Trigger, Boise, and Denzel get spooked when they're mysteriously summoned to the pub for a school reunion. It turns out that Roy Slater organised it all. The ex-cop is out of Nick, out of the Nick, and insists to his old schoolmates that he's a reformed character. At first the lads are cynical, but before long they're back at Dale's flat, having a drink and reminiscing about old times. But the sly Slater have a nasty trick up his sleeve. Series 7, Episodes 5 and 6 He ain't heavy, he's my uncle. Albert's found a new lease of life since he joins the estate's over-sixties club. He's even got his eyes on Marlene's mum, Dora. Rod Rodders, on the other hand, is miserable. Him and Cass are still separated, and to make matters worse, he's now unemployed as well. Dale Boy, meanwhile, snaps up a new motor, the Pratsmobile, as Rodney christens it, so that he can ferry the heavily pregnant Raquel around. He's worried about her getting mugged on the estate, but it seems Albert's the latest victim. Three men, a woman and a baby. Dale Boy's latest get rich scheme, flogging wigs to the old tarts down the nag's head. It's a snag when it turns out the items in question are actually hair pieces for men. Still, Rodney tries to make the most of it by sporting a naff ponytail to impress Cassandra, and it looks like it might work. When she mistakes the false ponytail for a rat, she cuddles up to her husband for protection. Raquel, meanwhile, is fit to burst with baby Trotter due to make an entrance at any moment. So there we have it. That was uh, series six and seven, plus a few Christmas specials. Um, I'll be back for the last part in a series of these videos uh, soon. So thank you so much for watching.